A little while ago, Yule had the fantastic idea to gather recipes from fellow costumers to create a costuming cookbook. I immediately knew that I wanted to join in on the fun, and I thought that my family's apple cake recipe would be the perfect fit. Yule combined all the recipes that she received from different costumers into a wonderful cookbook, and she illustrated a beautiful cover and back cover for it. If you'd like it, it's available for free if you check a link in the description below. And so today, I'm gonna walk you through how to bake my family's recipe for apple cake. Though the first step, when you're starting on a new baking project is to sew a 1950s apron from pillowcases you got at an estate sale, right? That's definitely what I did, although not required to bake this apple cake. I tried to write up and translate this recipe so that it would be understandable, but I thought making a video on how to bake this cake would be helpful too. We start, as usual with many baking instructions, to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and I like to bake with all of my ingredients out and ready to use. We'll begin by mixing all of the wet ingredients together, and by that I mean the butter, the eggs, and the milk. And I start with the butter here just because I already had my baking scale pulled out. To your butter, you're going to add three eggs. I would say if you can get the smaller eggs, at least in the US, that's probably better. And after that, you'll add your four tablespoons of milk. At this point, you want to mix all of your wet ingredients together. You want them to be kind of incorporated, but it doesn't have to be perfect at this point. In a second, for me, smaller bowl, I measure out my flour, which is 200 grams as well as all of the rest of the dry ingredients like the baking powder and the sugar. That then gets mixed very well together. The dry ingredients now get mixed in with the wet ingredients a little bit at a time, and by a little bit at a time, I usually go in three different stages. At this point, you do wanna make sure that you are trying to remove all of the clumps from the batter. In the beginning, it can be a little bit difficult, but I find by the time I've added all of the dry ingredients, it really smooths out into a nice firm batter. In my opinion, this is quite a dry cake batter, but this is about how you want it to turn out, if you want it to turn out well. I also like to add a good amount of vanilla extract, I don't usually measure this, as well as a sprinkle of cinnamon and just a hair of salt to enhance the flavor of the cake just a little bit. I make sure that's all mixed in together, and we can now work on the apples. The recipe I got from my family calls for four apples, but I kind of wrote in two large apples, so I'm going to be using two of these apples, although of course the more apples you use, the more densely packed your cake is going to be. And all of your little apple shavings are a perfect snack for yourself as well as any helpers you have in the kitchen. The way I like to cut my apples is to cut them into quarters and then remove the core and then slice them semi-thinly. The thinner you slice them, the more incorporated your apples will be into the batter. This is about how thinly I like to slice the apples and after you've sliced all of your apple slices you are ready to arrange them in your nine inch springform pan before we add any of the cake to the pan though it's time to grease it i grease the pan really really well with a stick of butter and after that, we are going to pour in some of the breadcrumbs. I had the panko breadcrumbs in hand. It doesn't really matter if you use too much because all you're going to do is spread them around. And I like a nice thick density. This kind of adds a little bit of a crust to the bottom and sides of the cake and makes it a little bit easier to remove from the pan after it's done baking. Now you're going to add half of your batter to your cake pan and do your best to spread it out into an even-ish layer. This doesn't have to be perfect. You just want batter kind of everywhere in your spring pan. This is one of my favorite parts, which is arranging the apple slices in the batter in the pan. I like to do them in concentric circles. You can do them really in any pattern that you like. I just would recommend getting a really good coverage of apple slices in this part so that you have a nice density of apples when you cut into your apple cake. With all of your apple slices arranged, you're going to add the second half of the batter to the top, and again, do your best to spread this layer out evenly over the apples that you've put down. It's a little more important to get good coverage here so that you have a nice even surface. I like to decorate the top of the apple cake. There's a few different options. Based on the amount of slices I had left though, this is the design that I chose for my cake. It's now ready to be put into your preheated oven, and I like to set a timer for 45 minutes to check on it but usually it takes a little bit longer. 
as this apple cake takes nearly an hour to bake, I decided to use this as a nice little pause to do a little bit of fiber crafts. And what better thing to do than to create a tatted border for a doily on which to display the apple cake when it's done. Just about 50 minutes later and the apple cake was ready to come out of the oven. I do usually let it cool down just a little bit, but not too much because this apple cake tastes really good when it's warm, and I remove it from the springform pan. I then like to decorate the top of this apple cake with some powdered sugar sprinkled on top, but another little fun trick is to put a doily on first and then you'll be left with a really cute pattern on the top of your cake as well. And if you joined me in making some fiber crafts in the Fibercraft intermission, now is a wonderful time to move your apple cake onto the doily to give it a nice appearance when you're serving it. I didn't have a chance to film eating this cake before a whole lot of my friends got to try it first, but I highly recommend using this apple cake as a basis to add some other things on top of. Caramel is really good. This is some apple butter that I had left over and a nice helping of whipped cream or ice cream. Although usually this is the amount of whipped cream that I eat my apple cake slice with. And I really enjoyed eating this apple cake slice for breakfast the next morning. Thank you so, so much for watching. I highly recommend that you check out the Costube cookbook and try out some recipes in there. Feel free to subscribe if you like fiber crafts, antique, vintage, historic of any kind, sewing, knitting, crocheting, and I will be back again really, really soon with a vintage haul next week. I can't wait to see you again then. Bye.